Hey, welcome back everybody. This is David Pendleton. I'm going to play some Tour 7 on Golf Clash with you guys, and here's what I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over ball value, which is something a lot of YouTubers don't talk about in this game, but it is an approach that I take in the game, and I'll explain to you what I mean a little bit later. I'm going to show you how to consistently win on Tour 7, so I plan on playing six games with you guys. I haven't played this tour in forever on this account. I strictly play Tour 8 and tournaments. So bear with me. Um, I do know the elevations of each hole. I do uh, remember the elevations of each shootout hole. What I don't remember, um, you know, off the top of my head is how the ball rolls on each shootout green. You know, so I'm still going to go over the strategy with you. We're still going to win more games than we lose. I'm going to go over wind, elevation, and rings. Now, this Tour 7 is really important to know the elevation because this is the first tour in Golf Clash where the game really mixes up the shots on you. So, for example, Tour 6, every single shootout on that course is 10% elevation except one hole, and that one's a 20% elevation. On Tour 7, you're going to see anything from 10% elevation all the way up to holes that are elevated at 40%. And elevation means you are shooting downhill. So just like in real golf, if you were to hit a golf ball downhill, the ball is going to be in the air longer, so it's going to be more affected by the wind. And it's really important to know that on this tour, that way you can go to shootouts, or that way you can win your shootouts. And I'm going to teach you how to play this game with only using Quasar and Navigator balls. That's it. Don't use anything else. If you have to use something else, then you need to sharpen on your skill and go down a few tours until you get it figured out. And I'm going to explain why to you, and especially things like ball value. Now, this shot right here is very tricky, tricky right off the bat. Um, it's 10% downhill. You know, I'm not going to be uh, adjusting rings on, on this one yet just because of how tricky the wind is. But, you know, ultimately what we want to do on this one is is get this ball onto that second fairway there. But to do so with this wind, it's going to require a lot of overpower and a lot of left curl, as you see me lining up right there. Now, um, you know, you'll see a lot of people mess up this hole, and we're going to be really happy with that drive. You know, we're on, on the fairway. It's going to be no problem um, with our second approach. And our opponent is using the same type of ball of us. So if he was using something different, I would start talking about ball value, you know, which we will see a little bit later in the game for sure. You know, but back to my thing about elevation, you know, the ball gets affected by the wind the more you shoot downhill. So when you go to these shootouts, you're really going to want to have the elevation memorized. Um, and if you don't know them, there's a lot of websites you can go to. You know, that will tell you hole by hole what the elevation is. You know, if you have a second phone, if you have a tablet, like I'm playing on an iPad, you know, you can have your phone pulled up and look at that website. Um, and then, you know, before each game starts, the game tells you, you know, what, what hole and what course you're on. You can quickly figure out the elevation of it. Now, it doesn't do that for shootouts, you know, so you'll have to have that memorized or do what I did. Keep like a little uh, notebook next to you, um, which is kind of a description of the hole and what the elevation is. So you have something like a quick reference guide. Um, you know, because of the wind here, we're not gonna make it onto the green on our second shot. So we're just gonna play to lay up here, all right? And by lay up, I mean, we're just, we just wanna land on the fairway and then try to approach the eagle by making a chip-in shot. Now on this particular hole, you know, what's more than likely gonna happen is, you know, my opponent and I are going to go to a shootout. Um, I don't see him getting onto the green on his second shot, although he did hit a better drive than me. So, he, you know, he may make it on there. Um, still not the easiest shot, but it's definitely not going to be that hard either. I actually thought the trees were going to be more in his way um, before I saw his, his path here. So he may make it on there, he may not. But either way, I still think we're going to go to a shootout, to be honest with you. And I hope we do. I actually want to go to more shootouts than normal when I make these videos because I want these videos to be informative. Uh, I really want people to learn how to play each shootout to give you the edge. 
Like at the end of the day, you need to win more than you lose to build your coins up. You know, that wasn't an easy shot. It wasn't really that hard of a shot, but, um, you know, either way, he didn't make it on there. I didn't make it on there. Not for this. Hmm. See how if I go right here, I'm at minimum distance of my thorn now. So I'm going to play this for a backspin shot. I want to avoid that tree, so let's go with the left spin here. A little tricky. You know, I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to take this shot over here. And at this point, I'm just playing not to screw up. Because I, I don't feel that our opponent is going to make his shot out of the sand. So let's just lay up right there and go for a shootout, right? We want some shootouts. So let's force one. Taking a drink of juice there. Um... So like I said, you know, I don't think our opponent will make this. Especially if he's going to go for a sand dunk. I don't see too many people try for this shot. You have to be super precise when going for this shot. Now, he's got a good wind. You know, at least he's got a headwind blowing straight at him. But I can't imagine, you know, he'll dunk this in. It was close. You know, it was close, you know, but we're closer. It doesn't matter. Um, so I'm happy we're going to a shootout right off the bat. Try to give you guys some advice, give you some elevation tips. And I'll show you the app while I'm waiting for him to shoot. So boom, right here, you can adjust what kind of ball you're using. Like I said, I only use a Quasar or a Navigator, so we use a Power One ball. This is how you adjust elevation. So if a shot was 10%, Downhill, you put 10% on this column. If the wind was 10 miles an hour, you put 10 miles an hour. And then that changes these numbers, right? So that's the driver I have, that's my sniper, that's my Goliath level eight, there's my thorn level eight, you know, so on and so forth, you get the point. Those are all of the clubs that I use in my golf bag right now. Now, this shot right here is probably my favorite shootout shot um, in this course. I do remember this one. Uh, on this one, I look for the same landing spot. So I want that yellow ring to be right there at the top of the rough. And I just aim at the pin. Use a little bit of side spin to counter effect the, the right push we're getting on the wind. And I, I guys, I just aim at the pin. Put in my 5 miles an hour. 10% elevation on this hole. 5.4 rings. We're going to play at maximum distance of our sniper. And I don't have time to show you the rings because I'm getting pushed for time. So I need to just make my shot real quick and then I'll explain that later. But we hit the ball perfect. Uh, we're gonna use a rough bump and we're gonna come in at the pin and we're gonna be super close. So, you know, 10% elevation on this hole. Uh, play the rough bump. And on any shootout that you can, try to find the same landing position, you know, because that gives you consistency. So I wanted the top of the yellow ring to be at the top of the rough, um, almost like our opponent is doing, but he has, uh, now he's moved it down a little bit. Um, but regardless, I always look for the top of the yellow rough, the yellow ring to be on the top of the rough. And right now we have 5.4 moving from left to right wind. I put, you know, one, one ball of side spin to the left to counter effect the wind. And then I move my adjustment to aim right at the pin, but I keep that yellow ring at the top of the rough. And that's going to give you a really consistent shot. You know, we were dot six, nine yards away. Uh, more times than not, I typically get a hole in one on this hole and we beat our opponent. You know, he made three yards away. So... All in all, you know, one hole, one really good shootout to show you on the strategy wise. And hopefully we can get a rematch, you know, for time purposes. But I'm going to reset my app to zero, no rematch. So we're just going to hop right into another game. Okay. 
All right, so, you know, I'm gonna try to show you how to adjust for rings if you're not familiar with that. I'll try to do that on most shots. Just bear with me if I run out of time. All right, so hole four on the Sunshine Glades. Uh, this hole was just in the tournament. This is one where you saw a lot of people hit water because they were getting risky. But the first thing to know is this shot is played 10% downhill on elevation. And I absolutely love that our opponent is pulling out a katana here. Because here is what I mean by a ball value. The game, Golf Clash, values a katana ball at three times the value of a quasar and navigator. And remember, quasar navigator is the only thing that I use. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean by ball value. As soon as we get done with this hole, I'm going to go into the golf bag and show you why I only use the balls that I use and why you will never need to use this type of ball on a Tour 7, a Tour 8, or a Tour 9. A uh, Tour 10, sure. You're going to need some katanas. You're going to need some titans, things like that. A little bit longer holes, a lot tougher wind challenges. But for something like this, you don't need it. I'm going to switch to a Quasar. I'm switching to a Quasar because I want the left side spin to be maxed out on this hole because I do not want to go into that bunker there on the right. All right, so I'm going to line up my shot somewhere around here. I'm going to know that I need to use left curl. I'm going to adjust this at 10%, 1.7 miles an hour, which is dot nine rings. So make the wind blow north. Um, remember, the yellow ring is one, so we'll put it right there. You know, that's nine tenths of a ring. And just a little bit of overpower. Left curl. Hit the ball perfect. And, you know, we're going to be in you know, the same zone, I should say, as our opponent who used a Kingmaker. Now, think about Kingmaker. Um, the best ball in the game that you don't have to pay money for outside of the Berserker. Now, the Berserker, you can only win in the Golden Shot when you play the Hard Edition of the Golden Shot. So, oh, I'm sorry, he used a, he used a Katana. He had a Kingmaker, but then switched to a Katana. Um, but still, the katana is valued at three times the value of the ball that I'm using. And I base the value off of in-game currency, which is gems. So if you want to buy katanas, let's say you want to buy 45 katanas from the shop, it costs you 900 gems. Okay? Now, the gems you get for free. Every four hours, the game gives you a chest you can open. Uh, once a day, when you make eight putts, you can get the golden uh, pin chest. And that gives you gems. But if you want to buy 45 katanas, it's going to cost you 900 gems. You could buy 45 navigators or 45 quasars for only 300 gems. So that's why I say that ball is valued uh, three times more. So see if I go right here, I switch to that club. But if I go up, that means I'm at the thorn. That's minimum distance. Okay, if I go all the way up, I switch to the goliath. That's max distance. So right here in this zone, we're, we're about minimum distance of our thorn. So when we adjust, yeah, actually we're gonna play this with the max backspin, forget it. I hate this, I hate the green on this course. It's very, very inconsistent. But at this point, you know, we're playing uh, for a shootout again. I just ran myself out of time trying to figure out where I wanted to go. I think my opponent did the same thing. I think we both hit the pin and we both rolled backwards. But either way, we're going to another shootout, which I'm glad because I can help you guys out on the shootout holes, give you the elevation and give you a strategy. You know, my only concern going to a shootout on this tour is I'm not familiar with, with the shootouts as far as how the green rolls. Does the green roll fast? Does the green roll slow? Uh, does the ball die? I just forget because um, it's been so long since I played this tour consistently. But, you know, hopefully muscle memory will kick in and we'll pick up a W. What's going on here? Well, that's goofy. Yeah, I hate this green. This green is super weird. It's super inconsistent. It's super bumpy. You can see that was a really weird looking putt. Either way, the ball's in. We're going to reset this all to zeros. We're going to see which hole we get so we can talk about elevation and talk about a strategy. Oh, here we go. So we're gonna get the same hole, remember, 
Remember, maximum distance of our sniper is how we play this one. And we play it with the yellow ring at the top, but again, I wanted to use some, some spin there to, to offset that big push we're getting from, from that 10 miles an hour to the right. And from here, we want to aim the ball you know, at the pin. Ten point nine rings. That's gonna be a bad shot. I got super rushed for time, but you know we still hit the rough bump. We're gonna come in, you know, just not as nice as I wanted to. Um, you know, I hit great right, so obviously I was gonna miss right. But the good part is, is I had the rings adjusted properly, which that was a really big ring adjustment. I had to hurry, so I couldn't explain it. But you see maximum distance of our sniper means I had to move that one 10.9 rings, so almost 11 rings. Now you can see that the ball was really good speed. So had I hit perfect, we would have been a lot closer than what we are and maybe even a hole in one. But our opponent here is not using rings. He just adjusted that one off feel. So when I see an opponent do that, I feel really confident about getting the win. And you might be somebody who's also doing that, who isn't using rings, who's just um, pulling the trigger back around feel. And you can see that cost him there. That cost him the win, um, which, is, which is why I do what I do, right? Which is why I'm teaching you guys how to do this. And I'm talking you through the strategy of the game. So he just wasted a katana. Now, let me explain to you what I mean about ball value a little bit more. For visual purposes, it makes it easier. This ball and this ball is all I use all the way through tour um, nine. So again, if I wanna buy 45 of these with in-game currency, it's only 300 gems to get 45 balls. Now our opponent just used a katana, 900 gems for 45 balls. He lost the hole. So he lost a ball that's worth three times more than my ball. Um, you're going to see opponents use Titans. Titan is the same value as a Katana. It's 900 gems for 45 balls. What really makes me laugh is when you see people use Kingmakers on these low tours. Because look at this value. 3,250 gems for 45 balls. I mean, that's insane. Why would you ever use this on Tour 7 to only win 100,000 coins? If you have to do that, if you're a player using Titans, if you're a player using Katanas, if you're a player using Kingmakers, or if you're a player using any of these other balls that you have to pay real money for, just stop. Don't do it. I mean, you can. Listen, if, it, if that makes the game more fun to you, that's awesome. But man, like learn the rings, learn the elevation. You can win all the way through Tor 9 consistently with only Marlins, Quasars, and Navigators. I promise you. Learn the rings. Learn the elevation. Save those balls for tournaments. Tournaments, you can rack up uh, coins. You can rack up clan points. And you can rack up balls. You know, so one of my other accounts in here is Big Daddy. I've won three tournament golds, you know, out of nine tournaments. I've got a second place, a sixth place. I have, like, over 700... Um, Titans and Kingmakers just from winning tournaments. And I'm saving those. I'm saving those for when I take that account to Tor 11, you know, to where I'm going to need more firepower. You don't need firepower um, for these holes. You just need strategy. Now, this hole right here, I'm going to tell you, is tricky, okay? I always go for the middle fairway, though. Uh, that's the way I always play this one. Too much top spin. And, you know, what we really want to do is just land the ball on the fairway, um, on this middle fairway is the, is the way that I always play it. You see a lot of opponents struggle um, on this particular hole. And I made a really bad shot there, but I got bailed out. I rolled out of the sand onto the fairway. I should have used, um, you know, a little bit more top spin and some more overpower. But... We have an opponent here who's going to use a more accurate club. He's going to use a katana ball. But the thing is, you know, we just went over ball value. 
And I don't think this ball is going to give him any advantage over winning this hole. For sure. He's going to lay up on the fairway here. I, I haven't really seen an opponent that I can recall ever playing this hole like this. So this is a little bit different, but we're going to see how it shakes out. We're two for two so far in this gaming session. Two shootouts. You know, hopefully, you know, when you get that shootout hole now, you're going to be a lot more confident, you know, heading into it, knowing that it's 10% elevation, knowing exactly how to play that rough bump. And, you know, you're going to win that one now more times than not. It's going to be a simple approach to the green, guys. Okay, we're at maximum distance of our sniper. You see how I can't move any further up? That's it. That's as far as I go. So when I put in my rings, you know, we're going to make sure to remember we're at max distance. And we're going to use a little bit of backspin to tame the ball down here because I'm going to use some overpower on the shot as well. No elevation, 6.9 equals 6.8 ring adjustment, okay? So right in there, make the wind blow north. That's five rings. All right, so this ball should bounce. Fairway, should bounce to the green, should stop. And we're going to be in a very simple situation to just chip this in and move on to a shootout more than likely. Now, I like to go with my drive on this hole. I like to go onto that skinny fairway in the middle. Um... I just made a bad shot, but I think it's the easiest approach to the pin on the second shot rather than going left. If you go left, if you hit the drive in the wrong spot, you can definitely find yourself in the rough and not have a chance to make it to the green in two. You can find yourself in the path of a tree, which can really screw up your second shot towards the green. So I find the fairway in the middle is the most consistent way to play this hole. And our opponent hit the tree there, you know, so that's one thing that you have to watch out for. Because, again, this guy is not using rings. Um, you know, he moved his trigger based off of feel. And you know that based off how they're playing the camera angle. You know, if they're not moving the camera around, then they're just doing it based off of feel. And there's players who are really good at playing the game off of feel. But you're not going to beat somebody uh, like myself consistently if you're doing that, because we're, we're using the math, you know, we're using uh, the, the, the system the game is supposed to be played, you know. So that's, that's why I like having the app, because it takes all the math out of it. Yes, there are websites you can go on to um, that you can print out charts and yada, yada, yada. It's just too much to keep up with. Make the small investment into the app. It integrates with an iPad like I'm playing on. But if you have an Android phone or tablet, it, it looks the same way. But if you're using an iPhone, you just have to get quick at tiling back and forth between the app and the game, the app and the game. And that's how I did it for a long time. It's not a big deal. You typically get it done within seconds um, once you get used to it. But it's really going to help your game out over time. And our opponent came in really close, hit his shot perfect, but um, came up just short. So we're off to a really good start, guys. We're three for three. Um, you know, we're using small value balls when it comes to in-game gems, and we're beating people who are using three times the value of our ball. And you can see we're not struggling. You know, we're picking up wins, and we're off to a great start. So we're, we're up 300,000 coins. Now, my goal is to always win, you know, at least three out of five games. That keeps me profitable. I normally do much better than that. But, you know, don't be upset, you know, if you lose a hole here or there. But, you know, the, the point is, is to win more games than you lose. I know that sounds stupid, but just break it down into small sessions. So here we go. We're getting another par five. This hole is played with 10% elevation. So because the wind is blowing directly at us, in order to move rings, we actually need to move our trigger down so we can adjust for that. Um, we're gonna use full right spin. We're gonna put some uh, top spin on the ball. But see how the ball right now is pointed directly at the sand? So we know we need to use right curl. And we're gonna adjust this two rings. So make the wind blow north. Remember, yellow is one ring, that's two rings. 
So that just remember, we need to use a little bit of overpower and we need to use a lot of right curls so we avoid that bunker. Hit the shot perfect, which we did. And you know, this should be a really good drive. Should get a nice bounce. And because we use all that curl, we avoided that sand. Now we're gonna have a really good opportunity to shoot directly at the pin for an albatross shot. Now our opponent is busting out a Burns ball and an APOC 4. Listen, if you wanna use an Apocalypse, go ahead. I don't find any reason to use an Apocalypse until you get to level five. You know, especially on this tour, just use an extra mile. You can use an Apocalypse if you wanna get used to it, but I prefer like an extra mile six, seven, eight over using an Apocalypse 4. This person is using a Burns ball. So this ball costs them real money. You know, that's awesome. I spend money on the game too, but I wouldn't spend money on a one-on-one -on -one competition for only 100,000 coins. Because as you can see, uh, they hit their drive. I hit my drive, guess what? We're in the same zone. We're both on the fairway and we're both gonna have the same approach for the second shot. Now, sure, I mean, one of us could make it. You know, getting an albatross is, um, Take skill for sure, don't get me wrong. There's also a little bit of luck involved, right? But that burns ball is not gonna make them get an albatross more than, you know, what my my navigator is here. No elevation, 6.6 .6 miles an hour. Make the wind blow north. We're going to use our ring adjustments, five. How many was it? Okay, so six and a half, so that's five. Yellow's one. Point five, so six and a half. All right, so we hit the ball perfect. You know, we're doing good on hitting perfects. Gonna come in nice and easy. Miss just a little bit, you know, to the left there. But that's okay. Uh, more than likely, again, we're going to a shootout, which is awesome. Man, you know, going to four straight shootouts when I'm doing a live recording for YouTube is perfect because I really want to teach you guys not only how to play, you know, the one-on-one, -on -one, but, you know, give you some, some, uh, some strategy on the shootouts, which more than likely that's where you're going to go to on most of your, most of your one-on-one -on -one play is shootouts. I do like this ball though. I think it's a cool looking kind of a classy ball. Um, it's like a cool pattern there. I like the colors of it. Opponent hit their shot great. So, you know, they're not going to get the albatross either. And just another classic example of how I'm using, you know, a power one ball or, you know, whatever. A ball that's very, very little in-game currency to buy with your gems. This person's using a ball they're paying real money for. And we're going to a shootout. And we're gonna see what happens. And I'm just telling you that if we lose a shootout, it's not because of the ball they're using. It's gonna be e A, either they made a better shot than us, or I just messed up my shot. It's gonna have nothing to do with ball selection at this point. So we're gonna clear this all zeros until I see what the hole is. And hopefully I remember the elevation of it. Yeah, so this one's 20%. Yeah, 20% is this one. And the only thing I don't remember is how the ball rolls on this green. I forget. So, well, we're going to play a minimum distance of our sniper. You know what? I'm just going to basically aim, boom, directly at the pin. 6.3, gonna use the bottom number because we're minimum distance of our sniper. So we're gonna move this 5.8 rings. Got a perfect shot and we're gonna see where this thing goes. Okay. So I need the note for the future that I need to play that one maybe between minimum and mid distance when I'm getting a little bit of a push from the wind like that. But all in all, I, I didn't really remember how the ball rolled on this green. And I don't remember those itty bitty details like I just explained. Now, if I were to play this tour over and over and over again, 
combining with using the wins and the rings strategy, then you know I'd have been a lot closer than what I was. You know, but we're gonna see how our opponent does here. Now you can see that they move their adjustment off of feel. They didn't flip the camera around or anything like that to uh, per precisely adjust for rings. And at the end of the day, that's going to cost them the win. You know, if they knew the wind and the rings, they could have got one on us there. It was a good game. It was a very close shootout. But we're four for four. Every single hole has gone to a shootout, which I'm super excited about. You've got to see some wind adjustments. You got to see how that one was 20%. You see, let's, let's say that you were using rings, okay, and you're good at rings. But you don't know elevation. Well, see how I had to move at 5.8 because I played it at minimum distance? If I would have not known elevation, I'd have played that one at 4.9. That's almost a whole ring you would have been off by not knowing the elevation of the hole, and that would have cost your shot to miss by more. So, you know, that's why it's really important to know the elevation of each hole. You know, we're four for four so far, so we're off to a really good start. We'll hop into another game here and see what happens. So, so far, we've picked up four wins. We beat two Katanas, and we beat a Burns Ball, which kind of goes, you know, with what I've been telling you about how you don't need to use those balls in one-on-one -on -one play on this tour. So, our opponent's going to use a Kingmaker. Now, remember, a Kingmaker in the game is valued way more than a ball that we're going to be using. So remember, 45 Kingmakers is going to cost you 3,250 gems. And if you're not spending money on the game, it's going to take you a long time to build up 3,250 gems. And is it going to give him an advantage on this hole? Definitely not. This is a par 4. More than likely... We're both going to a shootout, okay? Doesn't matter. Kingmaker, Quasar Navigator, he's not going to make that shot probably. I'm probably not going to make the shot. So we're just going to line this thing up. Full top spin, full right spin with the ball like this on this hole. We want to avoid that bunker on the left-hand side. 3.5 miles an hour, 10%, 1.9 rings. Make the wind blow north. Step one, right? Make the wind blow north. If you're just starting off, go to the middle. Use your take shot as a guide. Yellow's one. That's two. So remember, 1.9. Pull that there into the middle. Take your shot. Remember to use your little bit of curl. Hit the ball great. You know, I don't want to hit it great, but, you know, again, that, that right spin and that right curl is going to bail us out of going to that bunker there on the left. So here we are. Now, on this hole, if you want to be precise, the second shot is actually played at 10% elevation as well. It's played slightly downhill and over water. So we're going to get the wind out of here. We're going to wait for our opponent to take a shot, you know, with his fancy kingmaker. Now, I'll tell you, if he makes this shot, then that's good. You're going to run into opponents who make this shot. But guess what? You can make this shot with a basic ball. Like the Kingmaker isn't making this like an easier eagle than any other ball in the game. You know, just because he's using a Kingmaker doesn't mean, oh, he's got a better chance at making this shot. You know, he hit the ball perfect. But the thing that you noticed is, again, he wasn't using rings. He was just moving that trigger based off of feel. So we have our thorn. Okay, so see how I have the thorn there to immediately switch to the Goliath? That means max distance. We're at max distance of our thorn right here. So I'm going to back it up a little bit because I like to play off the fringe. I think the fringe gives you a more consistent bounce. Aim at the pin. We're going to put in two and a half. We got the 10% already. So max distance would be 1.5. But remember, we moved it back from max. So we're going to play at 1.3. So 
So yellow is one. That's about a third of the orange orange target for three. Oh, I hit the ball great. So, you know, we didn't hit it perfect. That's going to take our ability away to get the hole in one. Now you'll see freaking, or not the hole in one, but the eagle. You'll see right there, had I hit the ball perfect, it would have definitely gone in the hole. We would have won it. And that just shows you how precise you can be when you're using rings and you're using elevation. And you see how it said 1.5 for max and 1.1 for, for medium distance. Well, we weren't at max and we weren't at medium. That's why I played at 1.3. I just kind of played it right in the middle. Um, had I hit it perfect again, it would have been in the hole. But now we're going to a shootout, which is good because I want you guys to see Tour 7 shootouts. I want you to see how I play them. I want you to know the elevation. And we need to pick up another win. But if we don't, it's okay. We're 4 for 4. Worst case scenario, we're 4 for 5. That's an 80% winning percentage. Uh, we'll take that all day, every day. 20% elevation. This is the hole we just played. We got a little bit of wind blowing down at us. So I'm going to use some left spin to counter effect that right push. I'm going to let the ball guideline go just a little bit through the hole since the wind is blowing down. 7.2. 6.7, but remember I need to add a little bit more last time. So I'm actually gonna play this one like uh, seven rings. I gotta hurry. Ooh, I hit it great left. That is not gonna be good. Definitely don't wanna go great left when the wind is blowing left, that means I'm gonna get a left push, 2.66 yards, not good. I don't expect to win this hole, uh, and I lost because it's my fault. I didn't lose because he's using a kingmaker. Um, I had a good you know, spin on the ball. I had a good ball guideline. I just missed a uh, great left. You know, had I hit the ball perfect, I, I'm more dead center on this shot, end up with, with a way better approach, but you know, at least if I lose, you know, I'd rather lose because um, I'd rather lose if my opponent makes a really good shot. I hate losing like this because it was my fault. You know, clearly my fault. Didn't hit a good shot. Didn't hit it perfect. So I don't deserve to win. Um, but here we go. Opponent did hit the ball perfect. Um, but end of the day, you know, they didn't win. Here's why they didn't win, because they weren't using rings. They, they played the game off feel. They gave us a hole that we didn't deserve to win. And we're five for five. We're up half a million coins. So for you guys who are trying to build a bank, up half a million, that's freaking awesome, right? So, you know, I hope this is really helping you out. I hope you're getting some good tips and tricks based off of Tour 7. I hope you're learning about rings a little bit. I hope you're learning about elevation. If you want a video to teach you more in depth about rings, then put it in comments. You know, I only have 10 subscribers, so many people aren't watching what I'm doing yet. But I'll, I'll make more in depth videos if people want it, for sure. So this is going to be the last game we're playing. Oh no, I played Tour 8 on accident. Super sorry. So, you know, Tour 8, here we go. Damn, didn't mean to do that. This is a tough hole on tour eight, to be honest with you guys. It's a it's a long par five. It's a it can be a tricky um, drive here, especially if you accidentally clip that rough right there. But it's played ten percent downhill on drive, five and a half, two point nine rings. And I'm sorry for the noise in the background. My cat decided to come sit right here in this area and start to eat some supper, so he's crunching his food. But all in all, you know, this drive is 10% downhill. It's played just like this. It's played with a little bit of right curl to keep yourself out of the left rough. And you can see we, we rolled really nicely into the middle of the green because you get a little bit of push there um, off, the, off the fairway. Now, our opponent is using a ball that he paid real money for. He's got an Epoch 5, so that's a good, it's a good driver for this tour for sure. Um, I definitely stick with my extra mile. 
I just like it over my my APOC is only a level four anyways. I played almost ten thousand games on this account with only an APOC four. Um, so bad luck. You know, I've got another account that has thirty five hundred games played, also has an APOC four. So talk about how random the game can be. So it's gonna be a really good drive from our opponent. Um, they're gonna have a much better chance at getting to the green in two than we do. But you guys didn't watch this one. And my, my dog's gonna make some noise now. Now my dog's coming down to join the party. So you're gonna hear her drinking in the background. So I apologize for that. Um, but you guys didn't, you guys didn't, you know, tune in for tour eight. You tuned in for tour seven. I accidentally played this one, so I apologize about that. But hey, maybe you'll uh, you'll learn something on this tour too, right? This is one of the more difficult holes on the tour, especially to get to the green in two when you're using a ball <laughs> like I did, and then we smash out an albatross. Wow! Um, so there you go. How about like a little bonus edition for Golf Clash? But that's pretty cool. So you're going to see again, you don't have to use a ball like this. Like our opponent paid real money for this ball. This ball just came out within the past week. Um, they had to pay money for it. I just used a very simple ball. I think we just used a navigator on a long par five, a tricky par five to reach the green in two using a ball like mine. Now this is an easy hole to reach to the green in two shots if you're using a ball like this if you're using a titan if you're using a kingmaker ice it's more difficult using a navigator or a quasar just because you don't get the extra power that you get like you do on a kingmaker or a titan like those are power three balls even a katana is a power two ball so you get more distance on your drive uh, making the approach to the green more simple but you know either way my skill came in my ring adjustment came in. Um, this tour, this tour, I know like the back of my hand, okay? So I've played probably seven to, probably 7,000 to 7,500 straight games on Tour 8. Like that's all I play on this account. Tour 8, Tour 8, Tour 8, and tournaments. So I know this tour like the back of my hand. I'm very good at it. I'm very dangerous on tour eight. If you play me, you're probably going to lose. I'm not trying to sound cocky, but um, I'm really, really good at tour eight just because I've played it so much. All right, so we're going to go into another one here. And this one is played 10% elevation. You know, this is like muscle memory. When I see these holes come up, I just remember the elevation because I studied them, I took notes on them, and, and that's how I play a video game, right? Like, like a game like this, like I create my own strategy guide, you know? I try to remember what's going on, and we're going to play this one. 4.1 rings, make the wind blow north again. Middle take shot button, middle of the yellow. One, two, three, four, point one. Boom. Play it regular, play it down the middle. Hit it perfect, David. We did, Okay. So this ball should land, boom, right on the fairway, right? One hop onto the fairway. Here we go. Super simple. Now our next shot um, on this hole is played without any elevation. Pretty much a straightforward shot. No elevation works good on this hole. Opponent's using a quasar. I don't like a quasar on this hole because of how skinny the fairway is. The difference between the Quasar and the Navigator is the Navigator has wind resistance. I like to have the wind resistance on this hole to make my shot more precise. The Quasar is only a wind resistance one, but the ball gives you more side spin. This guy didn't make any adjustment before his drive, unless I missed something talking, but I didn't see him adjust anything for wind. Um, hitting that grate to the left might have actually bailed him out because the wind is blowing to the right. Yeah, I think if he would have hit that ball uh, perfect or great right, I don't know where it would have landed, but I don't think it would have landed there. Um, or maybe I just missed something before a shot. You know, either way, it doesn't matter. We're at maximum distance of our sniper. I'm going to use um, some left spin to offset that right wind push. You know, I don't expect to make this shot because I don't, I don't remember the nuances of this hole. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't remember how the ball rolls, yada, yada, yada. 
I'm just playing it like it's the first time I've ever played it. Max distance, 4.3 rings. That's 4.3. Doing a really nice job on hitting perfect tonight. So the timing is good. So let's see what kind of roll we get here. Okay, so pretty close, you know, came in just a little bit too hot, a little bit too fast, um, and a little bit to the right of the pin of the cup. You know, but overall, you know, unless Daniel makes a really good shot here, you know, we're gonna go to another shootout on tour seven. This is the final hole that I'm gonna play with you guys on tour seven. I really hope you enjoyed it. I do. If you're still listening, man, I, I can't even tell you. I really, really appreciate that. Um, and please subscribe. You know, I don't know where this thing will go, but I like doing this. I love helping people in my clan with the game for sure. If you're looking for a clan to join, you know, you see my clan there, Punish and Execute. Come join us. Our clan is full of funny people. It's full of people who are really good at the game. You know, we're compromised of people who used to be in C100 and, you know, either the clans broke apart or some people got tired of grinding every single season and were looking for a little bit of a break. So, you know, I made this clan, uh, started from the very scratch. We started all the way at rookie and, you know, now we're uh, professional three. We're going to win our fourth straight, you know, first place gold ribbon or banner, whatever you call it. We always finish first. And we're going to be an expert next season. So, you know, if you like the game, if you can handle some friendly and vulgar chat, come join us. You know, we are looking for some grinders, though, and some tournament players. You don't have to play tournaments as long as you grind. You know, but we need people who are at least putting up 1,500 to 2,000 clan points a season in order to get us back into C100. That's what we're really looking for. But if you found this video at all, you know, informative, if you think it helped your game, please subscribe to my channel, guys. I love to see this thing take off. I love the game. I love teaching it. I love playing it. I love the competitiveness of it. I love trying to beat people who are using balls they pay for, you know, balls that are super expensive in in-game currency. I love whooping them up with these balls that I'm using. So overall for the session, guys, we're five for five so far. We're four for four on tour four or on tour seven, we're one for one on tour eight, which I played on accident. And, you know, we're going into the last shootout hole here on tour seven. So either way, even if we lose, we're up a ton of coins and we got my favorite shootout again. So here we go, let's go, come on, hole in one. So remember, yellow ring, boom, top of the rough, right? Aim at the pin. Now, we're getting a little bit of push to the left, so we'll use a little side spin. And because we're getting some headwind, meaning the wind's blowing at us, we're going to make the ball guideline go through the cup a little bit. 10% elevation, 3.8 miles an hour, 4.1 rings. Make the wind blow north. I'm running out of time. I know, that's 4.1 right there. Come on. Oh, great left. Not good, David. So I hit the shot great, which means I lost a little bit of power. That's why we rolled short. I hit it left. That's why we rolled left. Uh, 2.4 yards, definitely beatable, you know. Um, again, I'll take the two yards in my head. I don't deserve to win the hole. But a lot of times, if you get within a couple of yards on most shootouts, you're going to win. But regardless, guys, it doesn't matter. You can't get upset if you don't win this one because we're five for five. So, you know, if we were five up for five on tour seven, we're up half a million coins. I accidentally played a tour eight. So what, we're up 700,000 coins. So if we lose one game, um, you know, what, one game out of six, you know, we're still crushing. You know, we're winning 83% of our games. And that in the long run, my friends, is going to earn you a ton of bankroll if you can win 83% of your games. Probably not going to happen unless you're a slugger. But hey, we won. We're 100%. And I keep saying it every time I do this. I get 100% for the most part. I don't understand. You guys are good luck. Anyways, guys, I'm out of here. I really appreciate you watching. Please subscribe. That's how you play Tour 7. If you need more help on a specific hole, leave it in the